talk uh, to Robert today because I think that your story is so remarkable and that somebody will, might be saved by hearing you. Very well. Okay, very well. Let's do it. <laughs> so you've relapsed publicly several times before. Every time I've relapsed, it's been publicly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think's different about this time? Uh, boy, essentially, and I, and I would say this to anybody, is that, you know, it's really... Um, it's easy to to um, embrace hopelessness when things seem insurmountable, and yet uh, it's it, I, it's actually just a matter of time until all of the elements come together for things to be all right. I mean, I, I believe that you know most uh, difficult situations will resolve themselves if you are persistent and if you don't if you don't uh, give up entirely. And that's what I never did. I never gave up. Do you still get urges to do drugs? I have not even an inkling of a desire, but I guard against that. That's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. Do, do you worry about relapsing again? Oh, no. No. <laughs> no, no problem. No, no. It's, well, yeah, the thought is terrifying, but rather than living in, in fear of something that is within the realm of control, provided I don't imagine I'm running the show, and that I don't get into a position where I start becoming narcissistic and I'm not vigilant anymore and I don't do the things that... And know. by vigilant, it means what? Every day you've got to... Well, uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes every day is a problem too because here's what I tend to do. I'm either, you know, as what you saw, that, that beginning clip, and thank you, very glamorous, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, or I also can tend to become so regimented and uptight that people are like, uh, hey, Grandma, should we just put a shawl around you? Why are you so... Because then I'm thinking, I've got, to, I've got to get this right. And either extreme is disastrous, you know? Mm -hmm. So I try to just give myself a break. Okay, know? so tell me, it, it, it's in your family, because I, I, we've all read that you were given your first pot at seven years old. Uh, I think it was seven, eight, or nine. And, you know, it's so funny because... And this is here's the great thing is that the buck gets to stop here is, you know, again, I become a little bit right wing about the whole thing. And I think if my son Indio, if I caught him smoking a joint, you know, after the, the soccer game on the field, I would lock him down. And, you know, kind of like Judge Myra said, I'm going to incarcerate you in a way that is very uncomfortable. It's supposed to incarcerate me in a way that's pleasant. Um, This is what I was thinking. What I, I thought when you said that, that it meant you were not going to some kind of cushy prison, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, you no. went to the real deal. Well, I did. Did yep. you ever see Manson? No, it would have been fun. Yeah. I heard that he played guitar and someone didn't like the way he played guitar and they smashed it. I said, I wouldn't smash Manson's Manson, guitar. No. <laughs> Robert says he's been addicted to drugs since he was about, what, eight years old? Uh, that's when, yeah, it started that long ago. And then marijuana was a part of your daily family life growing up. Like it was a staple like rice. Like rice. Carbs. Okay, here we go. <laughs> well, I, I, I actually had really good parents, and um, they were kind of square in a lot of ways, and they were very highly ideal people and, um, and, and artists and, and did their very best, but... I think it was a cultural thing at that time. Mm -hmm. no. But you you started smoking crack cocaine. 1995. 1995. Yeah. And something called black tar heroin. What is that? It's it's something that feels really good and should be avoided at all costs. Really? Yes. It's like a stronger form of heroin than regular heroin? I don't know about uh, the stronger forms. I just know that that's what I came across in a situation where it's like, hey, here's kind of what we're doing. And I'm looking, there's, you know, my friends, my peers, people who don't seem insane. And they're like, yeah, we're just doing a little of this. And I was like, great. Boy, that feels really good. I would like to do that every 20 minutes for the next, you know. And that's how it happened. It was literally the first time. Really? I had no... You were hooked the first time? I think so. I had no intention of... of uh, of, of making my, my public, my private life, and, and my career so very difficult. And yet I believe, you know, as I sit here today, that I, I hope it's for some higher purpose, you know? Yeah. Okay. Very disconcerting. Yeah. 
What was going on? Cocaine psychosis. That's just, it's one of the things that happens. It's, it's, it's tough stuff. But yeah, that's what was going on with me naked driving around with uh, the rats. Do you remember the incident where we did, we just had that 911 call where you ended up in a stranger's bed? That was my house. That was... Oh, no, it wasn't. It was theirs. Uh, it was there. <laughs> listen, I'm not, you know, these are, these are common mistakes you make when you're struggling with alcoholism and, and, and drug addiction. So were you drugs those. and, not, dr drugs and alcohol? You would do drugs and alcohol? The alcohol wasn't really my thing, but, you know, it's, it, it's kind of all the same thing. If you are leaning on something, any, anything that you attempt to control is something that you probably have a problem with, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. so when someone says, you know, I really wonder if maybe I should go to rehab. Well, uh, you're a wreck, you just lost your job and your wife left you, uh, you might want to give it a shot. Yeah. Um, I want to say there's less pressure and there's more camaraderie. Do you feel you have to carry the Iron Man movies in a way that you don't when there's lots of you? It just comes down, it's just a matter of schedule. I mean, you know, when you're in every shot of something, you know what I mean? Well, it's kind of like doing your own show. You know what I mean? It's not like someone saying, hey, I'll do the next interview for you, you know? So you forget, you know, you want to still make sure that you have your arc and your moments, but you're not responsible for the narrative of the whole thing. So it's kind of great. And I genuinely like all the other folks, so that helps. Were you a superhero fan as a child or as a teenager? Or? Um, I suppose as a, as a Westerner, as an American, it's just so part of the kind of kid culture, you know? Um, I wasn't a, a, like a nerd about it or anything, you know? But I'm definitely a, a um, you know, all the old TV stuff and the comic book stuff has, has influenced me. Iron Man is such a different superhero, though, isn't he, in that he's self-made. Sure. He's He's arrogant in a very appealing way. Right. Um, is that, was that what you brought to it, or was that there? It was always inherent in the comics. Um, and, you know, Stan Lee, back in the, the 60s, it was really kind of a Vietnam-era sort of fabrication, you know, and, and he was under pressure to keep coming up with new characters, and so he kind of did this mosh of things, and who'd have thought all those years later that it wound up being the character that differentiated this universe from other comic book worlds, and, and here we are, you know. What difference do you think it makes that he is, he is a self-made superhero? Um, I think more than anything, I, I always played it like he's a guy who's in big business that you may or may not have a judgment on. He's an arms dealer. And the metaphoric significance of having a piece of shrapnel from one of your own Warheads blow up, and then you actually have to you have to build something to save your own life. I, I always thought that that was that to me is just it's kind of a new myth. Could you explain the idea behind Ultron? I mean, what, what is the real fear here? Uh, in Tony's mind, a it's if you the idea behind a team like this is for the team to retire because the odds are that one or all of them are gonna get bumped pretty soon. So his idea is pretty altruistic. He's thinking, how can I put us out of business and still have a big bouncer at the door of our, our uh, vulnerable little planet? And, and that's why he does what everybody fears, which is unleash this, this monster. Right, well, clearly he doesn't do it to unleash a monster. It, it's co-opted. Um, there's a couple points in the script that I, I think is the reason that Age of Ultron is actually a, a worthy companion to Avengers and in some ways a better film in that it takes the conventions and it twists and retwists them in a way that's kind of clever. Just as an audience member, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I appreciate the kind of complexity of it. And, and um, what do you think of the obvious parallels being made between you and Iron Man? Um, at this point, it's natural, but I, you know, if you'd asked me in the first Iron Man, I'd be like, that's me. And now I'm realizing, I've realized that, uh, well, it's, of course it's not, you know. Um, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm such a fantasist that I felt like I was Tony Stark, but I felt like it was my persona. But none of us are our personas. But he's becoming a much more likable character as well, isn't he? I suppose A better so. man. Yeah, he's becoming a better guy. I, you know, in a way that you are as well, I suppose. Uh, sure. <laughs> 
I mean, what I'd really like to, I'd really like to ask you about a quote you gave to the New York Times. Um, and I, I don't want to pry, so if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But what you said to the New York Times once was, it was about, it was after your incarceration, and you said, you can't go from a $2,000 a night hotel suite to a penitentiary and understand it and come out a liberal. And I just wondered what you meant by that. Well, the funny thing is, and, and I appreciate your, your point of view, things that you said five, seven years ago or things you said in an interview that made sense to you at the time, I could pick that, I could pick that apart for two hours and be, clo be no closer to the truth than I'd be giving you some half-assed answer right now. Um, I, I couldn't even really tell you what a liberal is. So therein lies the answer to your question. The, the statement sort of stands by itself, doesn't it? I mean, d does that mean you're, you're not a liberal or that you came out of prison not being a liberal? Um, are we promoting a movie? To me, the thing is that it's, I'm certainly not going to backpedal on anything I've said, but I, would, I wouldn't say, actually, I wouldn't say I'm a Republican or a liberal or a Democrat. I think when I was talking to the person who was doing the interview that day, and, um, and that just happened to be my opinion.